The U.S. president has addressed America's largest ever gathering of pro-Israel activists. Speaking before the lobbying group, Barack Obama promised to ensure Washington's strong commitment to the Jewish state. But given recent public tension between him and the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, there were concerns Obama might meet a hostile crowd. CCTV's Ray Ruttenberg has more from Washington. Please welcome the 44th President of the United States, President Barack Obama. In theory, a prominent Democrat, particularly the U.S. President, should walk into a convention center filled with American Jews with some ease, but not this one. Just days before addressing the more than 10,000 delegates attending this year's annual APAC policy conference, Barack Obama riled many feathers by using his foreign policy speech to state his position on Israeli-Palestinian negotiations. He criticized the international media and essentially the Israelis for giving what he called the lion's share of attention to his reference to the 1967 lines and used APAC's podium to clarify exactly what he meant. I said that the United States believes that negotiations should result in two states with permanent Palestinian borders with Israel, Jordan and Egypt and permanent Israeli borders with Palestine. The borders of Israel and Palestine should be based on the 1967 lines with mutually agreed swaps so that secure and recognized borders are established for both states. The audience was mostly receptive to Obama's confidence, something 24 hours earlier could not be assured. Among those closely watching his speech and then responding, Israeli opposition leader Tzipi Livni. With a constant eye on Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's job, she thought to be favored over him among Obama aides. There's just one thing Israelis and the Prime Minister must remember. As more time has passed, our position becomes weaker on a number of things which are on the table. As we enter the negotiation room, to my regret, Israel is having to pay a price that in the past was not demanded of us. In some cases, support for the U.S. President was split down the middle, literally. This married couple traveled from the state of New Jersey to attend the conference. In 2008, she voted for Obama. He did not. I think we were all not sure, uncertain, um, what Obama was going to say and if he was going to satisfy some of our questions and concerns. I was fairly annoyed with what, uh, what, what, what was reported in the press and I thought he did a good job of, uh, of explaining it. Felt better about it. Obama, of course, is seeking re-election in 2012, so speaking at venues like this is key. American Jews, though small in numbers, some 2% of the population, make up a significant donor base. And while most vote for Democrats, a growing number are sliding to the political right on two issues, the economy and Israel. As they do every year outside the convention center, some 100 demonstrators gathered to protest their frustrations with Washington's backing of the Jewish state. Most engaged APAC delegates on their way in and out of the conference. We have to collaborate. We have to live on this planet as uh, one human race. And uh, every bit of this protesting makes a difference. Obama and Bibi Netanyahu, they heard us today. The stage is now being set for the Israeli prime minister. By the time Benjamin Netanyahu speaks here at the podium, directly behind me on Monday night local time, the U.S. president and secretary of state will already be well on their way to Europe. Now, Netanyahu will likely face a very enthusiastic crowd. He has has very little convincing to do here, but given the recent days of tension between him and the U.S. president, he knows the world will be watching, and this may be his golden opportunity to shine. Rui Ruttenberg, CCTV in Washington.